Tutorial 6, Database Interactor. In this module, we're using Slicer CMF version 4.1 to show you how to use Database Interactor. Database Interactor allows you to maximize an online database, run programs, and compute remotely. Under the Modules drop-down menu at the top, scroll to Web System Tools and click Database Interactor. Alternatively, you can use the search tool by typing in Database Interactor. On the left, you can see an option for logging into the server and connecting to the website. Before connecting to the database, you need to create an account. After that, you can log in from Slicer CMF directly. The URL for the website is dsci.dent.umich.edu. This is the login page where you can input your email address and your password. But first, create an account by clicking Create New Account. Input a username, email, and password. The username will be used for your data on the database, but your email and password will be used when logging into a database interactor from Slicer. Click Create and Login. To activate your account, you must go to your email but this account is already activated, so we will simply log in and use it for this tutorial. Log in, and here is the dashboard of the website. We created some morphological data, and we'll use it for this tutorial. We'll select TMJ OA Imaging Data, and you can visualize it by clicking on the eye icon. You will see all the different attachments we already have in the database. If you click on one of them, you can view it in this section but we're focusing on viewing it in the Slicer extension. So, back in Slicer, to connect, type in the same URL as the one in your browser with a slash at the end. Type in your email and password and click Connect. Different tabs appear. We will go step by step, starting with the first one. At any time, you can click Disconnect and return to the login page. In the Download Data tab, you have two different ways to find the data you need. The first option is Patient ID only. Here, you have access to all the collections in the database. For this video, we select the TMJOA Imaging Data. After you select a collection, in the Collection drop-down menu, you have access to all the patients in that collection from the Patient drop-down menu. If you go to a different collection, the patients will be updated and correlated. For downloading from the database, there are two options, the entire collection or selecting one attachment for a patient. We'll start by downloading an entire collection. Under Choose a Destination, we selected the desktop, but you can decide to save your files wherever you'd like. After you've decided and it is selected under Destination, click Download Entire Collection. Downloading could take some time. When the button turns back to white, that means your download is complete. To double check, we select the Add Data icon just to browse. Open our browser by clicking Choose File to Add. You can see the collection has been downloaded here. If you open the file, you can see all the patients. In each folder, you will find the date, and in the date file, you will find the files that are on the website. Clearing out of that, we will show the other downloading option. It only downloads one attachment for a patient. Under the Choose a Patient drop-down menu, select the patient, and under the Attachment drop-down, you select an attachment. Make sure you have your desired save destination selected. In this case, it's the same path as the collection. Click Download Selected Attachment. When it has finished downloading, it will appear in Slicer. You can center it by clicking on the upper left icon. The file was just downloaded locally. To double check, you can select the Upload Data icon, click Choose Files to Add, and navigate to your destination. Here, we can see the file we specified. The other way to retrieve your data is more interactive by date, more directive, but might not be easier. Select the Upload Date from the calendar. When the date is white, there is not a file found for that date, but when the date is in blue, there is a patient for that date. You can use this for utilizing different time points or to see when the data was put on the website. 
You can still download the entire collection or just the attachments you select here. For the Upload Data tab, you might have a different file you want to upload to the collection. Choose your collection file, patient, and date. All of these files have already been uploaded to the website, so for ease's sake, we'll upload an example file. Remember to select the collection again to refresh the data if you are uploading a recently added file. Check the file you want to upload and click Upload. It reports File Successfully Uploaded, and to check, you can go back to the website, refresh the web page, and it will appear in your dataset. For the Management tab, there are two options, Create Patient ID and Add New Date to a Patient. First, under Choose Collection Folder, navigate to the collection where you downloaded the collection. Enter the patient ID and select your desired date. Click Create Patient ID. To view locally, click the Upload Data icon with a green arrow and navigate to the collection. Your patient will appear here, test in our case. It will also be created on the website. Essentially, your local flyers are synchronized with the database. You can also add a date to the patient, and we'll use our test patient as an example. Select the date, click Add this date, and to view, you can see the original date we first selected, the new date we just added, in the patient folder. The Create a Task tab is the beginning of the computation portion of the plugin. Here, you will be able to remotely run programs on the server. Select Executable, and you can view all the Slicer programs. We'll select Model Maker as an example. We'll input our label maps. When you select a program or executable, you'll have to set parameters by selecting Create New Command Line. Under I.O., select your input volume that you'll use. For example, Modern Maker has I.O. and some other parameters. For other programs, like Intensity Segmenter, you have advanced options and different drop-down selections based upon the data the program requires to run. The options vary between modules. If you go back to Model Maker, you can see you have your input volume here. Let's select Create New Model Hierarchy As, then click Apply to run the program. It will ask you for some parameters, such as the file extension. Try to pick the file extension that the software requires to run. In this case, we'll use jipl.gz and click OK. It will then work remotely. The website will display this work. To visualize, go to the website and select Tasks. You can then browse the different tasks done on the website. The task is created with the username and the date. This one here is still in the queue. If there is no computer linked to the plugin, there is no way the task will be run. Under the Auto Compute Tasks tab on the right, you see Slicer as a remote computing grid. In this case, you can see the host, which is the website, the port, which currently says none, and there is a period, which is essentially a timer that will check online to see if there's a task available. The website can check every hour to see if there is something pending or not. Most likely, you'll want to set it to check every 60 minutes or so, but for this tutorial, we'll set it as every minute to see if there is something pending. Click Connect, and you simply wait the allotted time. Some of these modules take time to run, 
so the Auto Compute Tasks tab makes it convenient to run many tasks while you're doing things elsewhere. When you come back, you will have all the outputs. You can always check the status of your job online. Here is the output of the command line after one minute, and this example tutorial is not particularly helpful. When all your tasks have finished running, there is nothing left pending. You can click Disconnect. On the website, after refreshing, you can see the model maker computation is done. You can download from the website by pressing the green download button. The output will be displayed in a zip file. Double click to unzip the file and you will be left with the output of the tasks you sent. To upload into Slicer, click the Upload Data button. Navigate to your recently downloaded and unzipped files. To double check where the data is, you can navigate there and click OK to upload it into Slicer. In our example, the remnants of the model maker appear here. The good thing is you can create tasks that take a long time to run, such as the intensity segmenter. Select your parameters, click apply, and it will send the job. Then you can create another command line, click apply to send another job, and then when you're ready to leave, you click connect and you can just let the job run. At the end, if you want to disconnect, you can select disconnect here. If you don't click disconnect, you can close and reopen Slicer, and then when you select Database Interactor, you will still be logged in. That's all for this video. We hope it helps.